welcome back to another video and in today's video we have a Lenovo laptop this one is a Lenovo IdeaPad 3 the exact model is a Lenovo IdeaPad 3 15 ADA05 the model name is an 81W1 that information can be found on the sticker on the bottom of the laptop on the other side or on the box or inside the BIOS in this video I'm going to take you on a step by step how you can open it up and how you can clean and repaste it CPU and clean up the fan system. If yours is running really hot, we just feel like it's warming up, but the hot air is not coming out. This video is for you. By replacing the thermal paste and cleaning it up, you're not going to change any configuration in the system. And just for the people that keep posting on the comment, what was the temperature before and after? This is not a benchmark. This is just a regular um, servicing. Pretty much is like having a car and you want to do an oil change. If you want to have the best result, use the more expensive thermal paste. I'll cover those in this video. And I'll put the links for the tools and thermal paste and everything I use in the video description in case you want to purchase yours. All right, with all that said, let's get into it. First thing first, power off the laptop, flip it upside down, and we're going to go over the tools that I'll be using. Tool number one, a very important one, is an iFixit screwdriver set. You can use any other screwdriver set, but I prefer the iFixit screwdriver set as they have one of the best bits out there. These are made out of S2 plus steel. We're going to be using a Phillips number one. If you get the Pro set, they will include you with an opening tools and some tweezers. If not, grab yourself a guitar pick. And metallic guitar picks are suitable to opening cases and covers. Right. Second important one is an alcohol. 99% or 98% isopropolic or isopropolic alcohol. Very important. A used or new toothbrush. You need a good thermal paste. You can, I usually use the Arctic MX4. You can go with a new model, which is an MX6. Or if you want to overkill and get the best, go with Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. Depending on your performance, which one you want. If you want to use that office work and light work and normal usage, not anything heavy, go with an Arctic MX4 or MX6. And the most important one, it's a workshop towel. I recommend you guys to grab one sheet of the workshop towel and people always keep asking me can I use a microfiber towels no you can't and you're not supposed to because the microfiber towels will can and can damage the capacitors on the CPU on the GPU on the motherboard and the reason I use this one because as soon as you put an alcohol on this towel and you want to clean the motherboard this towel will rip apart before damaging the components on your motherboard so use the workshop towel all right, with all this on hand, let's get into it. So first thing first, we're going to remove all the screws on the, on the bottom. There's two types of screws, the short ones and the long screws. The short ones are in the front row and the long ones are at the side, mid and the back. So go ahead and remove all of them. Keep them in the two separate piles. Also, if you guys find my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking a like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the comments area. I think the base for this one is kind of broken. I see the plastic showing up. So, yeah. so now we remove the bottom screws. In order to remove the power on the bottom here, we're going to start from the front end. From the corner, we're going to stick the guitar pick between the power and the pump. That's right there. And we're just going to spoon it out. Do this all around. I'm just moving it all around. If I need to, I just move it around like that. Go to the corner back. I'm thinking about two or three millimeters. You don't need to stick the whole guitar pick inside. Just to the side, tiny two millimeters inwards. And then you can just grab it, wiggle it around. And it should release the bottom cover. You can take it outside and use a towel and clean the dust on the bottom. You can even wash it out. Leave it for dry. And down here, oh boy, look at the fan. Look at how clogged up that fan is. You want that fan to blow air through here and heat, pull out this heat sink that goes over the CPU. And I see lots of dust in there. So we're gonna open up and see the money stuff. Before we do anything, we need to disconnect the battery. The cables are really tough cables, so I'd rather remove the three screws for the battery, one on this side and two on the left side. Remove these three screws for the battery. Then you can just grab the battery and slide it towards the front evenly and it will slide up this connector. 
there because the cables are really tough cables. All right. Now we're gonna disconnect the press and remove three screws for the fan, one right by the jack, and two of them on the left side. All right. Now we're gonna disconnect this cable. I don't like pulling on the cables on the fan, they're really fragile. So I'm gonna use that tweezers, put it on the side of the connector and just slide it backward, wiggle around, and it will disconnect it. That's the best way. Lift up the connectors for the Wi-Fi, so now you can untangle them, just bring it around. And put it to one side. Now I can just go ahead and remove, oh I see the dust. Look at all those cat hair, whatever, look at that. Uh, so this is what it's clogging up and it makes it sound like a jet engine. And you can see the fan, which is what I want to focus. You see all this clogged up, pretty much. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take it outside and I'm gonna use a toothbrush. You're gonna clean it up with toothbrush evenly and blow some dry air. Don't put any water or any alcohol on it. First clean it up with a blower, air blower, like a compressed air if you have. And I'll be back after that. So before anything, just remove the heat sink. I'll take the heat sink outside to clean it too. I'm gonna blow up the whole thing in here. You remove the four screws for the CPU. This, the screws have a little C-lock. You just have to loosen up the screws. They will not come out entirely. So pretty much do a few hundred rotation and just lift up. And you can see the thermal paste is almost done in there. So again, take this one outside, use a toothbrush, clean it, and clean the rest. I'm gonna a little towel here. I'm gonna clean up this part. Now you see the plastic you have broken is right all over here. Because what happens when it's really clogged up the heat sink, the heat has nowhere to go, so it comes back and dries up the plastic cover, everything. So that's another side effect of overheating. So I'm going to take this outside and clean it up and I'll be back. Look at the difference. Now I can actually see through the fan. You can see through the fan very fine and it is really nicely cleaned up. I just have to brush it with a toothbrush and blow some air and that's it. Brand new. Same thing here. Just clean it up. And you're set to go to repaste. Now to repaste, we're going to first remove the old thermal paste. Put an alcohol right on the towel. Now we're gonna wipe over the CPU. You can see all these tiny capacitors around it, so don't worry about it. Just grab it nicely with a confidence and just wipe it all around in a circular motion, counterclockwise, whatever you want. And you can see the towel is just ripping apart. That's what you wanna do. Just clean, as long as you clean the crystal dye, you're fine. You don't need to go crazy all around. And let's use the same towel to clean up the excess of the thermal paste in here and pretty much we're done I'm gonna use a dry part do a second pass second pass grab the thermal paste do one line on the cpu don't worry it's not conductive i just put the excess here so you don't have to do this side as long as you put it right in there it's just one line right in there you just gotta spread around so I'm gonna bring the heat sink down. You don't need to change the thermal pads. The thermal pads are 0.5 millimeter thermal pads, but these pads are very fine. You don't need to replace them. They last many years. So bring it down, hold it down, and cross the screw the screws right on top. Always cross the screw them so that way the thermal paste will evenly spread all over the CPU die. There we go. Now what you want to do here is grab the fan, zigzag the cable all around it first, like that. And you want to leave a little tension at the back here. So because the hinges open and close, it needs that little extra tension in there for it to move. And it's still right underneath. Bring this side up. 
Now you can put the orientation for this cable don't matter they are both antennas so doesn't matter if you put one on the wide which one goes where that it makes zero uh, performance issue or anything that won't work is the same connected for the jack for the fan is slided inside the connector pinch it right in there put the three screws for the fan You should be doing this uh, servicing once every year, at least depending how often you use your laptop. If you're using it too often, then you might want to do it a little every eight months. I would recommend you, once you do it right now, open it up in, in eight months and see how dirty it is, how clean it is, then you know you should push your uh, date to more one year or you can bring it down to less. So all depends on your environment and how often you use it. Grab the battery, align the connector for the battery, slide it in there, make sure the screw holes match, bring it down, put it right in place, put the three screws for the battery, now once we're done down here we're just going to grab the bottom cover, we're going to bring it over, align it and push down, yeah I can see that you see that little beveled in there? In this side is broken because of the heat generated in this area. Created lots of tension and it damaged in there. So the screw pretty much is not holding up the case. So, but that makes no difference. This is just a bottom case to prevent the stuff going in and it looks pretty much sealed. So yeah. Put the short screws in the front and the longest screws all over the place. Again, I hope you guys like this video and helped you guys out. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in a the video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Just gonna finish it up putting up the bottom screws.